Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. It is Friday, May 30th, about 10.30 a.m. when I'm recording this. We do have some strong, severe storms coming in this afternoon. We'll get right to it. We're not going to focus too much on me. Let's focus on the maps because that's what's happening. Here's the deal. We do have some strong and severe storms coming in. But as I like to always say, this isn't going to be one giant severe storm that moves across the entire state. These are scattered. So not everybody will see severe weather, but the risk of severe weather is definitely elevated to high. High for our region. If you watch SPC outlooks, this is what we consider an enhanced look. For our local outlooks, we cater them based on local climatology and local impacts and experience. This is typically a day we see a lot of significant severe weather. So on a scale from, you know, one to five, this is a three. For us, this is like a four because we tend to see a lot of severe weather with these setups. Um, and definitely the potential is there. So you see the line of severe storms off towards the west certainly makes a lot of sense. They're starting to develop. The key will be the, the clouds. I still have clouds at my house. You're probably seeing breaks in the, in the cloud cover. The more sun we see come out here, the higher the risk gets. And it's not going to take much. There's a lot of energy. You've got a strong cold front, low pressure system right there. It's actually, when you look at the map, this is kind of the ideal, perfect setup for severe weather um, for our area. It's just a timing issue. If this comes in, a couple hours later and we get even more heating, the risk is even higher. Either way, I think we're going to see severe weather. So let's turn off a couple of things here and we'll kind of focus on on the risk of severe storms in our area. So first thing, we'll turn off the satellite and radar. We'll turn on the outlook for today. You could see and when I pop this on that we've been upgraded to the high risk for us. This is the medium. This is the low. We use a four point scale. We kind of group a couple of the middle to high ones together, but you get the idea. The area of red is our biggest concern today. And why is that area concern? It's not what you think. It's not North necessarily tornado risk. This is the tornado risk. The green is a general 2% chance of a tornado. Uh, the brown is a 5%. So yeah, that's that 5% is elevated, but the 2%, that's not crazy. That's not why we're under the high risk. The high risk is there because of that. You see the red? It's a 30% chance of damaging straight line winds. So this is because of high winds, straight line winds. I'll show you the hail probabilities as well, 15%. So when you look at the three impacts, uh, hail, wind, and tornadoes, the number one threat is there. It's, it's wind. It's wind right there because that's the high risk for our area. So let's get right into the future cast. So we'll dive right into this. This is the look. I mean, it doesn't look super impressive, but here's the thing. The individual storms that get going, they're going to be strong to severe. So we get into about the 2, 3 o'clock time frame. You start to see the storms come together here. Um, again, there will be breaks. Not everybody's going to see severe weather. And again, this is just guidance. So we don't know where the exact strongest storms will be, but this is roughly the line. Look at the time, 3.30 this afternoon. So let me back this up. Strong storms already developing in the mountains. They move east. And again, this is going to all hinge on the amount of sunshine. Only an hour or two, three hours of sun might be all it takes. But you see the line moving across around 3.30, uh, 4.30, 5.30. 637. So it moves pretty quickly. I mean, if that's the, there's one good thing about this, it moves in and out fairly quickly. So it's going to be boom, boom, and done. So this is why it's not going to consume your entire day. It's not going to hit every location. It's just that we want you to be aware of the storms that do get going today. They're going to be severe because I can already see the comments people going, that wasn't a big deal. Yeah, because for somebody, you're going to be here and not see anything, and someone else is going to be in the heart of one of these cells and getting clobbered with damaging wind. So you, you see the idea here. Look at that line right there. This is, again, four o'clock. Remember, let's go back and turn on the outlook for today. You, you get the idea. See where it's, it's moving? So if I back this up, you kind of get the idea on where the worst weather, this red area, is kind of the area we're watching. So that's why it's highlighted. And again, this is just one model. This is just one run. The great thing about uh, short range rapid refresh guidance every hour we get a new run of the guidance as it kind of adapts to the atmosphere and what's happening so this is this was the 8 a.m run the 9 a.m run is just finishing up and it might change a little bit that's why i don't want you to read too much into specific looks on the radar when i show you these i'm just kind of showing you the general idea of the timing and location because looking at this you're you know somebody's gone oh i'm gonna get missed no this could easily shift this way this way or this way slightly. Those subtle changes, we're just not that good to know those things. Remember, precision is not the same as accuracy. This is a super precise look. That's not what I expect to happen. I always kind of give you the, the heads up that, hey, generally somewhere in here, 
there's going to be some severe weather regardless of what this piece of data shows. So let's look at some of the sounding data. I know this is kind of in the weeds, geeky wise, um, from the same guidance. You can see we've got a pocket of dry air up here um, in the mid levels, 15, 20,000 feet. Uh, there's a pocket of dry air. So that's an indication that when there's dry air in the mid levels, you tend to get straight line winds because dry air cools things. Evaporative cooling causes uh, dry, cold air to form that descends to the surface pretty quickly. It also could mean some hail because um, the, the freezing levels are down around 10,000 feet. So that's potentially could bring some hail. Now, let's talk about the tornado risk because everyone worries about tornadoes. Look at the tornado, um, you know, significant tornado parameter. It's not crazy. There's a couple cells where we have some pulling of it. But overall, for a line like this, that is not crazy. So that's why the tornado risk, it's there. It's what we call non-zero, but it's not super high. And I'll show you the rotating uh, storm tracks. These are storms that have rotating updrafts, not necessarily tornadoes. And you can see there's a couple cells that have rotating updrafts, which could mean monster hail as well, but also an isolated tornado risk. But overall, that tornado risk is low. I want you to really focus on the wind, the wind, the wind, because again, often in our area, 90% of all damage in our area from severe weather is caused by straight line winds. And again, that's 58 miles per hour or higher. We could see some storms in these cells today with 70 to 80 mile per hour winds. So that's why we want you to be prepared for this afternoon. We'll have updates throughout the afternoon and we'll be streaming on WCNC Plus so you can get us anywhere. That's on our website, our app, as well as any of your smart TVs. You can download that app and watch streaming even when we're not on TV.